Now let's prove the uh, theorem 3.8. Theorem 3.8. In family, F in M of G is normal in CGC infinity if and only if mu of F mu of a family f, which is a collection of mu of a little f, f belong to the family of f, is locally bounded. Okay, so we have the equivalent statement about the normality of a family f in the mg. Uh, here you have to notice that remember this mg is not closed mg is not closed so here when you say it you have you can only say this f is normal in this is what the note says you can only say that f is normal in CGC infinity because the closure after you take the closure it may not be completely containing M of G it will be containing CGC infinity okay only the, the example is that let Fn of Z be N times Z for N greater than or equal to 1 so you have a sequence of uh, uh, analytic functions actually it is analytic but analytic function, again, is not closed in the CGC infinity. It is closed in CGC, but not in CGC infinity. Then we have that the mu of Fn of Z is equal to 2n over 1 plus n squared of square of Z squared. Okay, just do the derivative. It is n in the denominator. It's 1 plus f n of z norm square. It's like this. Okay? And we see that the mu of f, which is a mu of little f n, n greater than or equal to 1, is bounded. It's Is bounded locally, locally bounded for you fix uh, a z locally, locally bounded. But this sequence, this family Fn is normal, is only normal in CGC infinity, not in M of G not in M of G, right? Because uh, Fn an approaching infinity, the sequence converges to the constant infinity function, constant infinite function, constantly infinite function. But the constantly infinite function does not belong to M of G. M of G requires isolated singularity. Here you you do not have isolated singularity. All right, so this is a, a, the statement plus a remark. You have to be careful this normality is in the CGC infinity. Okay, now let's see the proof. Proof has two parts, right? Uh, first, we assume that the mu of a family F is locally bounded. And we show that F is normal in CGC infinity.
normal in CG symphony. Uh, well, normality in general has Arcella Ascoli theorem. So by Arcella Ascoli theorem. Arcella Ascoli. Remember that Arcella Ascoli theorem has two conditions. Condition one, every point f of that point, every point a, f of a for all f, take closure should be compact. It has compact closure. But here, c infinity is a compact set. C is not compact, but C infinity is compact set. Actually, it is a one point compact compactification of a C. For the compact set, any closed subset will be compact. Any closed subset of C infinity is compact. So it means the first condition of a Arcella Scully theorem is satisfied automatically. So the, the first condition of Arcella Scully theorem is satisfied automatically. So we only need to show the aqua continuity. So we need to show, we only need to show the aqua continuity. Continuity of this family F. Okay, aqua continuity of family F. Remember the aqua continuity in the Arcella Scully theorem says for every point it is equicontinuous. And we have a conclude we have a uh, equivalent readout. It is equicontinuous at a point if and only if it is equicontinuous at each compact set. Okay. Okay. So let's check. Uh, we're going to use compact set instead of a, a single point. It is sufficient, it is sufficient to show F is equicontinuous over compact subset. Inside G. Okay, over compact subset inside G. All right, uh, let K be an arbitrary closed disk containing G. And remember we say the mu of F is locally bounded. It's a closed open disk, then it's a compact. Over this compact set, the local boundedness is also equivalent to the local boundedness over a point, right? So the M and the let M, capital M, be the, be a constant. So that mu of f of z is less than or equal to m for all z in k and all f in the family f two ways. Okay, for all points and all functions, it's locally bounded. Okay, so now we choose Z, Z prime be in K, just a pair, no condition. Choose Z, Z prime in K. 
Okay, uh, ZZ prime in K, we're talking about the meromorphic function. Maybe Z or Z prime are two poles. Or maybe just one of them is a pole. Or maybe they are not poles at all. Okay, so first, we assume that Z, Z prime are not poles. In F, uh, a fixed function here, sorry, a pose of a fixed function F. A fixed function F, okay? Uh, let alpha be greater than zero arbitrary. So we have an arbitrary constant, positive constant number. Mm, we are going to choose, let's say, okay, see here, z, z prime, close the disk k. z, z prime, let's assume we get a straight segment connecting them. If you get a straight segment connecting them, you have no any reason to claim along this segment there's no poles. Okay, along the segment, I don't know if it has a pole or not. So I'm trying to avoid the poles in this argument. So for arbitrary alpha, I'm going to choose those points. W0 is Z. So it starts from Z, and then you have a W1, W2, up to Wn. Wn is a Z prime. So this is W0, this is Wn. And all these points are in K, in this compact, uh, in this closed disk. Closed disk is a closed and bounded, right? It's compact. Satisfying the following conditions. Okay, so we have several conditions. Condition one, so we will use the labels in the textbook. W in this uh, WK minus one, WK. Whenever you have you have a segment, this is W0, this is W1. You connect the W0 and the W1, and every point over this small segment implies W is not a pole of F. Okay, that's the first condition. So in this whole segment Z and Z prime, we don't know if it has a pole or not, but if we just focus on the small point, then in this segment, there's no pole. Okay, that's the first condition. And second condition is labeled by 3.10. It says, well, you cannot follow the street path, then you will have this uh, detour. And we claim the total length of this detour is not too long. So sigma k from one to n, ops value of a w k minus w k minus one. This is uh, the length of each small segment. It's less than or equal to twice of z minus z prime, ops value. Okay, so you get some detour, but it is controlled. It's a proportional, it proportionally controlled by the original distance. All right, it's proportionally controlled by the originally distance. And 3.11, 3.11 says, Okay, they are also very close so that they have almost identical ops value of F W K. So here. See this is a little bit long and complex. OK, 
okay so in fact you see here if you cancel this one you actually take a one half you cancel with one half from the top this one is equal to square root of a one plus f w k of value square one plus of value f w k minus one square take square root these two expressions are the same thing and here you use the continuity of f with up value function so this is correct it it is almost the same so minus one is less than alpha and here it should be uniform it works for k between one and okay uh, well, this is just something I, do, I, wrote. I wrote. It's not part of a uh, state requirement. 3.12, the next one, it says it, you can almost have the derivative. So, ups value f w k minus f w k minus 1 over w k minus w k minus 1 and minus f prime of w k minus 1 ops value is less than alpha k between 1 and n right so this uh, this list is a requirement for the selection of a w 0 w uh, why we can have such stuff why this always exist okay so let's check them one by one so z is non z is not a pole z is not a pole in its neighborhood there's no pole and so you can draw a neighborhood you find the w1 and then from w1 every point you can draw a neighborhood so that there's no pole then you connect them you eventually reach the z z prime right so you can find a polygon First, we can find a polygon, polygonal, polygonal path P in K satisfying 3.9 and 3.10. Okay, so because it has only finitely many uh, uh, the, uh, the, 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 the poles, so we can skip those poles. Again, finitely many because K is compact. K is compact, so the meromorphic function can only have finitely many poles. So we can we can really skip it by the polygonal path. Okay, and then you have this path, and we can cover the path. Cover P by small disks. So that inside each disk. each small disk the condition 3.11 and 3.12 holds holds okay because it's very tiny this this is about continuity 3.11 3.12 is about continuity continuity is in the name local stuff okay continuity this is it's because it is because 3.11, 3.12 is about the continuity of f. First part is about the uh, meromorphic condition. The second part is about the continuity. So it's a local. It's local. Uh, 
every point you have a small disk, then you can cover the whole path, polygonal path P. Polygonal path is a compact set. P is compact, then there is a finite subcup. There is a finite subcup. For this finite subcover, like here, for the finite subcover, we choose W0, W1, W2, Wn on P such that each segment, each segment belong to one of them disk, one of those disk, each segment, wk minus one wk belong to, belongs to one of these disks. You have only finitely many, so you can do it. Okay, and then those W0 up to Wn satisfy all conditions. Okay, so we do have a sequence of a point, like a detour, a detour to satisfy all the conditions. Okay, now let's see what we can do. Uh, before that, we're going to set beta k to be the square root of one plus ops value f of w k square, one plus ops value f of w k minus one square. Okay, this is denominator, just write in the short way. Uh, now let's see. Let's check the distance, f, z, f, z prime, distance. Uh, triangle inequality, that's equal to sigma k from one to n, the distance of f, w, k minus one, f, w, k, triangle inequality. Uh, this one, the distance, remember what is the distance? 2z1 minus z2 square root of 1 plus z1 ups values square plus z2 ups values square, like this. So here, this one is beta k. The denominator is beta k, so it's 2 ups value f of w k minus 1 minus f w k over beta k. That's just the definition. Okay, uh, and then we're going to insert stuff. Let's see, let's see what I'm, we we're going to do. So two over beta k, let's put it here. And this part, the difference, difference we write it, we divide it by w k k minus one minus w k multiplied by w k minus one minus w k and then it's one thing and then we're not done subtract f prime of w k minus one and w k minus w k minus one and plus f prime of w k minus one, w k minus w k minus one. Okay, see, we do two tricks here: divide and multiply by the difference, and then subtract and add the same quantity. And then we're going to apply the triangle inequality again. The first part is two over beta k of value f w k minus one minus f w k over w k minus one minus w k 
and minus this minus f prime of wk minus 1 and times wk minus wk minus 1 and plus sigma k from 1 to n here this one ops value f prime of wk minus 1 wk minus wk minus 1 okay so this is how you get this inequality in the textbook so far this moment we only try the triangle inequality we still don't use the local boundedness for the mu of f remember that the mu of f is less than or equal to m so apply it to this f function uh, this sequence, the sequence w0 up to wn depend on this fixed function f. For one fixed function f, you can find such stuff. Okay, so so far we only handle one function. That one function belongs to this family f. So the mu f is less than or equal to m. And remember we're talking about the regular numbers, not poles. So we get two ops value f prime of w k ops value over 1 plus ops value f w k square is less than or equal to m that is exactly the definition of mu of f for the regular point analytic point not not the uh, pose so this implies no oh, sorry here i i miss a 2 over beta k 2 over beta k, so you always have 2 over beta k. So this 2 and f prime w k minus 1, you have it. That is less than m. So, so what do we get? We get 2 f prime of w k, ops value is less than or equal to m, 1 plus ops value f w k, ops value square. This mu f. So again, let's uh, we write this triangle inequality. The distance between f z f z prime. Okay, so what do we have? This one. This is a condition. Where is the condition? Condition three point twelve. You can approximate the derivative. You can approximate the derivative. So it's less than alpha. So it's a two alpha. This is alpha. Sigma k from one to n, one over beta k. Beta k cannot be moved. And w k minus w k minus one. Okay, so that's all. That's this huge part. And second one plus sigma. This two is used. It's together with f prime of w k minus one. So it's m. You have m over beta k and 1 plus ops value of f wk square and wk minus wk minus 1. All right. See? Just just uh, apply this inequality for this two ops by the f prime of w k minus one, and this term together with beta k is exactly the uh, the, the 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 condition three, the third condition. Beta k is the denominator. This is numerator, so that's exactly the condition one point eleven. So this whole thing, the ratio is less than one plus alpha. So it's less than or equal to two alpha. Sigma k from 1 to n. Uh, 1 over beta k. And here, this is uh, uh, this whole thing is less than k from 1 to n, less than 1 plus alpha wk minus wk minus 1. Okay. Uh, 
let's see what about the first part the first part the first part beta k what is the beta k where is the beta k beta k is greater than or equal to 1 right beta k is 1 plus a positive number 1 plus a positive number so it's greater than or equal to 1 reciprocal of beta k is less than or equal to 1 so this one just amplify it by 1 by 1 you don't see it it's a sigma wk minus wk minus 1 sigma is less than twice so it's less than 2 alpha times twice z minus z prime see it here you use that beta k is uh, 1 over beta k is less than 1 less than or equal to 1 1 over beta k is less than or equal to 1 and this part this part you move 1 plus alpha forward it's less also less than 2 m plus alpha m and 2 z minus z prime right the same thing and then let's combine them so you have a 4 alpha here here you have a 2m 2 alpha m and times z minus z prime okay so what do we get we get the distance f z f z prime is less than or equal to this constant in the process this process depend on this f for different f you have different w0 w1 w2 wn but finally this final result has nothing to do with uh, w0 w1 w2 wn okay so this alpha greater than zero is arbitrary this uh, distance is going to be less than or equal to 4 alpha 2 m 2 alpha m z minus z prime then uh, alpha is arbitrary you just let alpha approaching zero you will get that the distance between f z f z prime is going to be less than or equal to here this is zero this is zero it's just two m z minus z prime z minus z prime and this is a uh, aqua continuity this is aqua continuity right this is exactly the aqua continuity this works for all f because this m works for all f when the distance between z and z prime is close enough then the distance between f z and f z prime is close enough okay so again the proof the middle step depend on the different f but the final result is independent of the selection of w w0 up to wn all right, so we prove the echo continuity for non-pole points, analytic points. What happens if one of them is a pole? So suppose Z prime is a pole of F, but Z is not. Okay, one point is pole, the other point is analytic point and then choose w in k with w not a pole of f so we have a w we have a, a not a pole then let's see the distance between fz and fz prime remember that fz prime is infinity 
at z prime because poles are, uh, z prime is a pole at z prime is infinite. Then we have triangle inequality f z f w plus distance f w f z prime. Okay, and the first two term points are both analytic points. Z w are both analytic points. So by the first part, it is less than two m distance z minus w prime. And second one is a distance between f w and infinity. Okay, so this is infinity. Well, z prime is an isolated pole of f. So we let w approaching z prime and the w is always not a pole. Okay, then we get fw will approach f of z prime, which is infinite. fw will approach f z prime is infinite. The, this is in c infinity. In c infinity, this means the distance of fw and infinity will approach zero. Also, when w approach, w approach z prime, this is in c, not in c infinity, in c. This is a point in the domain. Domain is g, g is in c. So this is in c, so it implies z minus w, ups value, this is distance in c, approach z minus z prime, okay, in c, this is in c, this is in c, c infinity, okay, so we take this limit, we have that, okay, uh, see what we have, we have here, from here it's f, distance f z, f z prime less than or equal to 2 m z minus w prime plus the distance f w and infinity and this will approach 0 this will approach z minus z prime this is a plus 2 okay the same thing still we have f z z prime it's like this Uh, if this is a case of when we have just a one pole, if we have two poles, z and z prime are both poles, then we are going to find the w and the w prime. w approaches uh, z, w prime. If z and the z prime are both poles, If we have two poles by accident, <laughs> then we choose W and the W prime in K weighs W approach z w prime approach z prime and uh, w w prime are not poles of f right so you let you then you have uh, f z f z prime well actually that's the distance is always zero actually you don't you don't actually uh, show that because this is infinity, pole infinity, infinity. This distance is already zero. Whatever stuff is less than it. Yeah. 
So it's not necessary to show it. It's not necessary for two poles is a trivial case. Sorry, uh, we don't need this stupid process. For two poles is trivial. Two poles is trivial. I, I guess that's why it is not even discussed in the in the book. Okay, uh, it's my bad. Okay, uh, either way, we have the distance f z f z prime is less than two m z minus z prime. Then you can get the standard uh, argument to get epsilon and uh, delta, then f is equicontinuous. Hence, f is equicontinuous. f is equicontinuous over k, each k closed compact, uh, closed uh, disk. Then the, by the Asilas Golly theorem, this uh, uh, family f is normal in uh, in the CGC infinity. So we finish the proof. Uh, not finish the proof. We finish one direction of the proof. The other direction of the proof in the book is left as a, an exercise to the reader. So I strongly suggest you to prove this. So this is an exercise two on page 160. Exercise two on page 160. In that part, you're going to prove the converse. If you have a normal set, a normal family in CGC infinity, then the mu f is going to be locally bounded, okay? Okay, so at this moment, we finish the section three. In the next section, we're going to have the Riemann mapping theorem. That's a, a, a different, different type of argument. Okay, okay. So if you have questions, send me email. We finish this uh, uh, section.